Father, we thank you for the day you give us. I pray, dear Lord, that you would bless uh, those that's traveling this morning, God, and thank you that they have an opportunity, Lord, to go get some relaxation and get uh, some time, some downtime with the world's issues. Lord, they'll be able to uh, get some refreshing. I pray they come back renewed. Lord, keep them safe, Father. And Lord, I thank you for how you moved this week, Lord, and so many lives and, uh, that's been a part of faith and a part of our family. Thank you for the answered prayers, Lord. Now, would you bless your word this morning? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Speaking of prayer, that's what we're going to talk about this morning out of Luke 18. And we're going to look at one verse this morning. Uh, actually, we'll probably go down to verse 8 at some point. But uh, we're going to look at this one verse this morning as our thought is, we ought always to pray. And uh, he said, He spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, in our politically correct world, let me say that includes you women. All right. Get your feathers all ruffled about it, but it does. I mean, yeah. what are we supposed to do? Go back and just retranslate the whole Bible and put men and women in there? I mean, come on, right? That's how crazy that stuff gets uh, nowadays. So, but it, it's that Christians are always to pray. How about that? that? That'll be a good way to put it. And Jesus is saying that, so we know it's truth, and we know it has some great meaning. And so we all always to pray and so I'm going to break down that verse just a little bit and we're going to look at a few thoughts this morning on that and I got one issue that I definitely want to drive home and I hope we get later on uh, in the lesson this morning but he spake a parable unto them and, and a parable and just for teaching's sake is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning um, you know sometimes People can speak and you don't understand what they're saying and you know sometimes I had to say hey don't speak in me into an unknown tongue speak where I can hear you <laughs> you know what I mean even though they're trying to communicate but Jesus used this very often in the scriptures and uh, I know it's simple to us uh, sometimes but then sometimes uh, he uses those analogies where we need that simplicity the Bible speaks about us staying with the simplicity of the gospel. The problem is that uh, we sometimes want to go over people's heads and it's okay, we need to get meat and that's what I try to do in here is, uh, you know, put it kind of down there where everybody can eat off of it. That's the way I got to have it. That's the way I like it. And that's the way I learn. And still learning, by the way. And Jesus used these parables and so that is basically, when you see a parable, that is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So Christ often spoke in parables to get the messages of the truth of the kingdom of God across to people. And so that was his way. So here he is once again speaking to them in a parable. Then he says, uh, to this end, and to this end that men ought, if he was to look at this and basically he's saying he spoke a parable unto them to this end that men ought that is something that we break down here that means it is necessary uh, so when we use the title that we always ought to pray it means that it's necessary for us and so that men ought to do these things is what he's saying it, for Christians they ought to do this is a necessary. Jesus is teaching us it's necessary. There is a need of this thing called prayer. Jesus was so in tune about it. Hey, he would go apart. You remember the Garden of Gethsemane? Hey, they knew where to find him. That was a great testimony. They knew where to find him. Do people know where to find you and I? Especially in a time of need. When we're going through some struggles and some trials, is our testimony a part that we can be found being in prayer to the God of heaven? And so that is something that Jesus did often. He always went 
apart. He had him a special place. And I encourage you all the time to find you that special place. But it necessarily doesn't have to be a particular place. But you know those places where God speaks to you at. But the truth of the matter is God's not going to speak to us unless we put everything else to the side and get along with God. He's just not going to do it. You've got to have that one-on-one -on -one time. And to put that one-on-one -on -one time into perspective, that means you're going to have to put things to the side. If that means you getting up 15 minutes, 30 minutes earlier than what you normally get up, just get up. Just set that clock. And you'll find out that the Holy Ghost so wants to spend time with you that he'll wake you up before the clock goes wrong. <laughs> you go to bed tonight and you say, all right, I normally get up at 6 in the morning. Well, I, I, with the Lord's help, I'm going to get up at 5.30 in the morning and get away, get my coffee, and get some time with God before i got to go out the door. You'll find out. If you go to bed praying that and you really desire that, Listen, the Lord desires that time with you also. More than you desire. You see, and we're going to see that in a moment, what the Spirit of God involves in our prayer life. But He will wake you up oftentimes before the clock goes off. That means, get on up. God wants to speak to you today. Every day is a new day. But to this end that men ought, and that is a necessity, there is a need of it, Jesus is saying, it is right and proper. In other words, Jesus is saying this must be done. Also, in the, it means uh, in the nature of a case, it becomes a necessity. You know, sometimes things happen, uh, and it's just a necessity to do something, to respond to a situation. It's no different than w when we have something happen. It is of a necessity to pray during that time. It's a necessity for the Christian to pray. He said that uh, to this end that men ought always to pray. You can put it like this. It's simply because of the nature of a problem. The only thing that you and I uh, can do is to pray for the situation. It becomes a necessity to pray because it was brought on by circumstances or by the conduct, conduct of others. It becomes a necessity to pray in reference to some situation that has been brought on in order to attain some end. Now, I'm going to uh, do something here, and I, I got it connected. I ain't got at least connected this morning, so I want to look at this thing as soon as I can find it here. This is something that happened, and this is an instance that we need to uh, be praying. Now, this was... Uh, October of a couple years ago, we was flying up uh, to Boston, and I've flown a lot. I've done that a lot, so it's, I normally don't record or do anything. Just so happens, I was recording this thing, and uh, we're going to see here. Let's see. Video is playing on the TV. Okay. There we go. And, and listen up now as we're going through this. I know it probably won't pick it up too good on the air here. Let's see. Just listen to what's going to happen here and take place. I know this is called dead time on the air, so I'm trying to fill uh, the gap here. But what is taking place, you'll hear in just a moment, this woman start crying for help. She's trying to get her husband to wake up. Well, her husband's done coded out. Now panic is starting to go over on the airplane. The most of are going down the runway. Alright, this is this is me here. I'm taking the earbuds out. Okay, I start hearing help and panic going on. I'm just one of those I want to try to do what I can do to help. And so the video is gonna basically go out in just a moment. Uh, because I set the phone down. So I'm assessing the, the situation going on. But and her husband can't they can't get a pulse on him. They can't figure out what's happening. And and so So they're calling for a doctor on board or some kind of medical person and everything's in panic. The lady is panicking. And 
then I, I approach, I'm a few aisles back. I said, can we pray? So here I am, I, I'm grabbing her hand, reaching over a couple of aisles, and I'm praying out to God right now as this is going on. But I want you to notice how the prayer ends. She's praying also. Uh, it, it, it was just a quick prayer. What? Five seconds? Ten seconds? And I closed the prayer in Jesus' name. And I got the I got the lady. And I got the people out of the way. And what we did is ended up dragging him out on the aisle. He, he was a, bigger than Dale Prather. <laughs> he was a big boy. And, but all that happened like that. Now I just played you a minute and a half of a video. That's how quick things can change. Mm -hmm. You go in just your normal day life yeah. and all of a sudden something happens. What is it now? Now there was an instance that uh, Tim Tebow done the same thing on a plane. It got reported all over the country. <laughs> That's okay. But the thing is God can hear your prayers and nobody may not even know it. It may not get reported over the, all over the country as something. But God can use you. But if God's not going to use you, if you don't pray first, I knew that was the first thing I had to do was pray. I mean, it was of a necessity. God, I needed His presence on that plane or it wasn't going to happen. And, and so what happened is the lady come up and I'm supposed to get right back into the, the word here, but this is a good illustration. A, a lady come up and looked at him after they called for medical personnel, looked at him, turned around and walked back and sat down. I said, well, I'm not going to sit here and just, uh, I guess it, it went off. Let's see, you're going to have to just, y'all just want to look. It's Luke 18. I ain't fooling with it. <laughs> but she went and sat down. Well, I, I'm not going to sit here and watch this man die. And try to not try to do something. But the best thing I can do is what? Pray. That's what we did. God moved in the situation. And I'm sure there was other folks praying on there. But you know what? That became a necessity. And at this end, men always ought to pray. So the necessity of a situation sometimes brings on prayer. And that's how powerful it is. Then he says that men ought always to pray. And always means at all times, always, forever. And of course, you know, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. And that's what we're to do. Pray without ceasing. Now, also, he says, as always, meaning all the time, to pray. And of course, that means, uh, you say, man, this is really elementary. Yes, it is. The Word of God is that way. Amen. And we need to learn it. We need to remember. We need to keep the simple things simple. We need to get back to the basics sometimes. Sometimes we get so caught up in learning all, and it's good, but we learn all the Greek and the Hebrew, and we go to seminary and or cemetery, and we do all these things, and we try to get up here and be above people's heads. Man, we need to be simple. Mm -hmm. We need right. to keep it simple. Yea, you ought to search out the deep things of God. and But you need to do that on your own. And, and when those situations come, yeah, you can go deep. You can go deep sometimes. And, and I've been witnessing to people and, and talking to people on the jobs. And they may ask some questions or, or, or I have to, you know, maybe uh, rebuke them for, for cussing or doing something like that, taking God's name in vain. And I uh, had to do it this past week. Just... Me and this one guy on the job ourself, and he gets out and starts letting it fly. We didn't have communication before about the same thing. Well, it's me and him on the job by ourselves. And I just said, well, I'm going to praise Jesus. I don't care what you do, you know. So we just went on and had that conversation 30 seconds after he got out of the truck. <laughs> uh, so it's standing up for the Lord, but it's standing up for our Father. But you got to have those times in prayer. It's simple. You need to keep it that way. To pray means uh, to pray to the one true God. This is a point. I want to do a little study here 
and go through the importance of this for the Christian and for the world. You know, as I say time and time again, you can get up, as the pastor said last week, you can get up and you can thank God and you can talk about God all the time. And that's okay till you mention the name of Jesus. When you mention that, that brings separation. The Muslims, they cry to God, their God. The Buddhists cry, cry to their God. Uh, to the Hindu, it's their God, and you can become a God. I mean, so just by, just saying God doesn't mean a whole lot. There's no separation till you mention the name of Jesus. Amen. And so that's what I want to look at this morning. I want to do a small study through the Word of God, and we'll look at these things. Now, he says that men are always to pray. So to whom do we pray? Well, what did Jesus say? Our Father, which art in heaven. So we approach God the Father, and we approach Him through Jesus. Listen to these scriptures, John 14, 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. John 15, 16. Whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. John 16, 23. These are the teachings of Jesus here. Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Verse 24. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. If you will ask, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Verse 26, At that day you shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. Jesus said, If you'll ask in my name, I'm going to pray to the Father for you. Now listen to me good here now, because I hear this repetitively. And what this is, it, it, it's, it's a, we, we all have to grow, okay? But Jesus is very plain about asking things in the name of Jesus. That is one of the principles that you and I must learn to do. It is the utmost importance for the Christian to ask the Father, uh, uh, to ask our Father to answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Jesus Christ, the Scripture talks about, is our advocate in 1 John 2.1. We have, any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Then it also says that Jesus is our mediator in 1 Timothy 2, 5. Listen to the scriptures. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Now we know that a mediator is one who intervenes between two. You know, if I come up to, let's just say, uh, if I come up to the courthouse and I want to go see the judge, I'm not getting in the door. Somebody, I'm going to bring a request to somebody. Somebody's going to mediate for me. They're going to say, you wait right here. That's right. And then they're going to go in and talk to the judge. And they're going to come back out and say what the judge says. Well... This is the same order laid out in the Scripture. We are to pray through the Heavenly Father, but Jesus very plainly says we're to go through Him. I just read you four or five Scriptures that Jesus taught that very same principle. And we see that we have an advocate. We have that go-between. And we see that there is one mediator. There is only one. And that's the man, Christ Jesus. Let's read that verse again. There is one God and one mediator between God and men. That's the man, Christ Jesus. So a mediator is one who goes in between the two. So my friends, if you really want your prayers answered, you need to understand this very principle. You've got to understand these things. And God is the one who intervenes. Jesus is the one who intervenes in between the two. You say, my prayers ain't getting answered like I like. Or maybe... Uh, I'm having to 
ask too many times, or maybe I don't ask enough times, what's the right thing to do? Well, in the situation on the plane, I wasn't going to sit there and pray for 10 minutes and co continue to ask God for some help. God heard that prayer right. quick. Amen. And my wife was sitting right across the aisle. I know she was praying. The woman, her husband was not even, didn't even have a pulse. And by the way, we did get him on the, the, the ground. Uh, one guy tried to get him out and, and he couldn't. I pushed him out of the way and I drug him to the middle seat, to the first aisle seat and laid him in the floor. We hooked the uh, AED thing up to him and, and I was compressing in and about 45 seconds in, he went like it right there and said, if you don't get off me, I'm going to get you off. I said, hey, <laughs> praise the Lord. That's a good sign. <laughs> but that prayer, I didn't have to continue to ask God all those things over and over and over. Sometimes we have to. And we're going to see that in just a moment. But we got to get our prayers to God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son. If we want our prayers answered, and we better learn to ask them the way God has established it in the Scripture, and that's asking in Jesus' name. Here's what I'm finding a pattern over and over and over, especially in our younger generation. They'll pray a prayer, and they'll say, In your name I pray. You praying to God? You want your prayers heard? You better do it the Bible way. I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of Jesus. You say, well, that's being just critical. No. I'm trying to teach you a principle that's laid out in the Word of God. He, did, he talks about us asking. We've seen Jesus is the mediator. But all the time these kids are saying, now I pray. And it's our fault. We're letting the ball got drop. I'm telling you as a as an older uh, a Christian, <coughs> not teaching the people and the younger generation how to pray, it's our fault. It's not theirs. But they hear this from the leader, so they just start saying, in your name I pray. You say, well, that's being too critical. No, it's not. It's in Jesus' name. Or oh, they'll just simply close a prayer, and I hear this often here. What I'm telling you, I hear here at faith. In other places, but I hear it here. Uh, they'll pray a prayer, and they'll get done and say, Amen. Listen, you going to approach God the Father and just say, Amen? <laughs> Who do you think you are? I mean, God's comical. God laughs. I'm teaching you a principle, though, that's in the Word of God. If we want our prayers answered better, we need to distinguish to God and to the people hearing us that it's in the name of Jesus I pray. And that's very important. So it's established in the scripture that we pray that we approach God the Father through our mediator, God the Son. But there's yet one more principle we're going to look at that in this powerful thing called prayer. And that is the third person. Yes, he's involved in it. That's the Spirit of God. And Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray. And here's our word again, for as we all, Jesus said, men ought always to pray. And here in, Luke, in Romans 8, 26, the Spirit of God says, He helpeth us pray. He helpeth our infirmities. We know not what we should pray as we ought to. And, and that's the truth of the matter. I don't care how long you've been walking with God, how many degrees. You know what degrees are? They're like uh, curls on a pig's tail. They don't make no more ham. <laughs> Let me say that again. <laughs> degrees are like curls on a pig's tail. They don't make no more ham. They don't produce no more ham. they cute. They look good. We need to be about producing some ham. Amen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I don't care what title you got behind your name. You and I, we don't know how to pray as we ought to. But the Spirit Himself maketh intercessions with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, so that is the third person. 
So this prayer thing is serious. Jesus said that men ought always to pray, and then we're going to look at the result of prayer right here, and we'll be done. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now he used this parable. He says in verse 2 of Luke 18, saying, There was in the city a judge which feared not God. Now he made that purpose that this God, that this man did not fear God, this judge was not a godly person. Neither he regarded man. Nobody told him what to do. He was the man. Didn't make no difference what anybody said. If he didn't want to listen to you, he wasn't listening to you. What we would call a cold-hearted or a callous person, we've all witnessed to those kind of people. We've all seen those kind of people. And a lot of times, we was those kind of people. It was a point in my life I didn't want to hear it. <laughs> Take it somewhere else. Come up and witness to me on a job side or something. Who do you think you are? I don't want to hear it. I cuss that much more for you. That's just the way I was. But God, God had a way of breaking things. Amen. Thank God for that. So this man, he didn't fear God. And there was a widow in that city. She came unto him saying, Avenge me and my adversary. And he would not, I love this, for a while. <laughs> he said, I just ain't going to do it. Go away. Go away. No, no, no. That's one of the first words we learn, amen, is no. And sometimes we approach God and God says no sometimes. He will. But this man, he told her no. For a while, he wouldn't do it. But afterward, now this wasn't a situation like on the plane. This was something that we encounter often. Afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me. In other words, she will not shut up. <laughs> she comes to me day after day. You know how you get uh, group texts or somebody texts you all the time or somebody calls you all the time? You look at it and you say, oh, man, you're right in the middle of doing something and that thing goes off and you're like, oh, man, not again. I ain't got time for this right now. Oh, I'm the only one that does that, actually. <laughs> I didn't think so. Because that's just the way it is. This person, this widow, kept coming. She was in need. She didn't have nobody else she could go to that could do something about the situation. She continually come to him. She wearied him. She got on his nerve. He said, if, if I will do it if you will leave me alone. It's basically the thing. He said, yet she weary me. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Sometimes it has to happen. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. That's the power of our prayers there. The result of persistent prayer, it will call strength for the believer. He said, he said, I pray that, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. That's the strength. So a persistent, a result of a persistent prayer life is we will not faint. We will have some strength. Faint means to be utterly spiritless. You know, sometimes we get so worn down and worn out and exhausted that we just become spiritless. There's no get up and go left to us. Because we've been, we walk out that door and we get hit that way. And we walk out that door and we get hit that way. We get that phone call and we get hit that way. I mean, we're just taking shots left and right, trying to satisfy people. And you, can, you might as well forget about it because you can't do it. And you're going to have critics, so, but you get all that all the time, all the time, all the time. And it wears us out if we're not having a prayer life. But you see, we can get along like David did, encourage ourselves in the Lord, have that prayer life. And so we see that the persistence of prayer will get your request heard. We've seen that through those portions. Now, persistent prayer, according to James 5.15, it can save the sick. Persistent prayer, according to James uh, 5.15 and 16, it availeth much. Availeth means to be strong, to have power, to become a force. And that's power there in a persistent prayer life. Persistent prayer, according to 2 Chronicles 7.14, can heal a nation. 
Persistent prayer according to my testimony will convict the law per person and show him there is a need of a Savior. I stand here today saved because of the saints of God praying for a lost sinner. That's the only reason. I was one breath away from dying and going to hell. But somebody, some saint of God got a hold of God, the Father, through Jesus Christ, the Son. Amen. They was praying in Jesus' name for an old dope-head sinner that was on his way to hell. They thought he was living a good life. And the Holy Spirit brought conviction and prayed also there. And then I become saved. But somebody prayed for me. As the old song says, they had no doubt that God would bring me out, that He could change my life and set me free. Amen. Father, we thank You, Lord, for Your words this morning. God, may we not lose the simplicity and the power of prayer, knowing that the most powerful thing we can do on this earth is to call on the God of heaven. Help us to do that now in Jesus' name. Amen.